Alec, what's going on? Oh, not much. Just having some interwebs trouble and... Oh, yeah. It's not really internet trouble, though. It's more like browser problems. I don't even, I don't even know what it is. Hey, but... Well, you have this problem, but I'm also having probably more worrying problems is that when we were recording, it was uh, giving us shades of the previous problems with mine Ooh. on my end with the audio delay and stuff that you can't easily fix um, so yeah that's not that's not good that's not good but hey we're here still yeah. we're starting we, we get a lot to talk about you know we still have things to do we have still have things we can try to say and talk about and discuss <laughs> so things we can try to say you know things we can do things we can try to say <laughs> but, uh, can we go on an adventure? <laughs> I think we can go on an adventure, probably. So, uh, we are here to talk about some YouTube channels. I'd say we both watch a fair bit of YouTube. You know, it's yep. probably my... Oh, yeah. It's probably the thing that interferes the most with me watching and playing and uh, accomplishing other things. Is that, like, well, I have all these YouTube videos I want to watch. So, like, it's more easy for me to go to... The YouTube videos I need to watch than it is for like TV shows or games. <laughs> like yeah, so I'm like always watching videos every day. I got videos lined up, so it's a lot. Yeah, I mean for me, it's like it's like um, I mean that's what I I download. I have like YouTube Premium, so I can download ad free, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can download videos and listen to them while I'm driving or while I'm working. Yeah, um, I'll do that too. So that's just been like super nice. I mean, obviously, I don't get like visual jokes or visual gags or whatever when those come up, but like, I'm still for the most part able to get the gist of, of stuff going on. Like video essays are definitely like bread and butter, I would say for the yeah. for the most part. Um, when it comes to a lot of that stuff, but yeah, I mean, I use it for like podcasts and and other things that, that upload to YouTube, and it's just it's. I watch, but aside from that, I also watch a lot of it when I'm at home too. I, I definitely YouTube is like a big thing for me for sure. Yeah, very yeah, and a lot like, of passion for that. And uh, yeah, I don't have YouTube Premium, but I do watch it on the road at work and stuff. You know, just because it literally mm -hmm. is. It's gotten to the point where there's so much YouTube that I can't just like come home and be like, all right, let me watch all the videos I missed because it's just too many. So I've just got a constant backlog. Yeah. I've started using a little watch later playlist a lot. I just, it's constantly, <laughs> their videos have been in there for months and months. So just like, oh, I'll get around to them. Yeah, but. I gave up on, I gave up on my watch later like a long time mm -hmm. ago. My watch later has videos from like three years ago or something. I mm -hmm. gave up on that so, so long ago. But, but you know, it's, it's cool. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot out there that I enjoy. Uh, today we're not going to be talking about like our, it's not going to be like our top 10 favorite YouTube channels. It's just going to be 10 YouTube channels that we recommend. So five each. Yeah. And, uh, we've done videos in a similar vein in the past, which were called 10 video games that defined us, 10 TV shows, 10 movies. And, um, those were more like personal to us, but these are just going to be five recommendations. You know, I tried to get a little diversity in here um but i got some some small like under a thousand subscribers i've got some like hundreds of thousands of subscribers some with millions you know i've got the whole spectrum here but yeah we're just gonna yeah mine are not that mine are <laughs> mostly I don't, I don't think i have one that's under under 100k I think most of mine are over a million, actually. Okay. But but they to me they're they're all they're all indicative of I I did actually kind of think about like the the definest kind of idea, and so like I tried to aim for things that like generally describe things that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. or, or facets of things that I'm interested, in, and also our is it our channels that I literally will never miss a video that they that they upload. Okay. That's another like factor. I will say, I know we talked a little bit briefly um, before mm -hmm. kind of just like spitballing. I didn't tell you any of mine, but you, you indicate a couple of yours and they're both ones that I would potentially have on a list. So yeah. we can definitely talk about those. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, so it, it's, 
it's just one of those things where I was I was thinking more in in that that thing when we do future videos because we almost certainly are going to do more of these in the future. Again, we both watch a lot a lot of YouTube, um, so there's there's definitely a lot of uh, you know a lot we could we can cover, and there's still like a lot of different different avenues or paths I could sort of go down in terms of discussion. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. All right, so uh, I guess I'll start off because you're wearing the shirt. That's Happy Console Gamers, my first one. All right, Happy Console Gamers is a channel that we both yep. have been watching. So he was years one that years. was like I was. Thinking, he was probably a result of Happy Console Gamer. Ultimately, it led me down a, tra a trail of interest mm -hmm. that we would not have probably be doing this if it wasn't for videos that he made. So. Yeah, I mean, he was someone like right in our gaming community space that like was like uh, on the smaller end of things, and then he's since just grown more and more. But he's still like a fairly mm -hmm. niche YouTube channel in the grand scheme of things. But he's got a couple hundred thousand subscribers at this point. I actually have uh, Happy Console Gamer the movie. Yeah, and that's <laughs> still kicking movie. over. I still have that at, at home. Yeah, I still have that kicking around at home. Yeah, this is an oldie. When did this come out, even? 2012. 2012, I yeah. believe? Yeah, it was 2012, yeah. So, like... It was before Blu-ray... It was before Blu-ray was, like... He could have easily made a Blu-ray rip of this, because I think it's 720p on his channel. So he could have made a a lower-end Blu-ray rip of it. He pro Actually, I would say probably his video files that he had, he probably shot in 1080p. Mm. So he probably theoretically could. Uh, that's something that if we ever, for what somehow ever get him on or, or, you know, connect with him in some other way. I, I've talked with him before because back when I was on another podcast, before even I was with you on a podcast, we talked with him for a bit, and we actually talked about the movie a little bit. Um, but that's almost one thing that I wish we could have maybe like gotten like, oh, would you, did you have like files for? to have a more high resolution thing because it was i mean it was very much like a personal project it was like there it's not like the most amazing yeah. thing ever done it's clearly mm -hmm. just a guy and his friends making a movie and but that's also why i love it i haven't watched it in a few years now but like i i've watched it a couple times and it's always like so it's kind of like a nice little delight to be like oh it's like feels like a warm blanket to kind of yeah over. so he made a movie with his friends so, so I mean, which is we, cool. we've been watching for over 10 years at this point, over 10 years. And, uh, mm. it's just a constant staple. Um, yeah. yeah so well, if he's, you, this is the 15 year shirt here that I just got like mm -hmm. literally like a week ago. Wow. Well, so, yeah. yeah. So if you don't know who he is, Johnny millennium, happy console gamer. He's, uh, very much, he does reviews and, and talks about video games. You know, that's the essence of it. Everything from retro, retro to the newer games, and uh, but it's very much he's always been a, a channel driven by like nostalgia, and like his passion for certain games, and he, you know he's always been, he's usually positive about things. That was his whole thing. He's like, he's not usually overly critical of things. You know, he talks about stuff that he loves, so it's always a good vibe. You know, but every now and then, mm. I just watched his top ten like disappointing or disappointing games of twenty twenty three video. And that's a lot of fun. So, yeah, it was it was pretty good. It was good stuff. He's just fun to watch. And um, you know, watched his uh, game of the year twenty twenty three video recently as well. And he he said that Tears of the Kingdom is the greatest game ever made. Yeah. Ever made. That's crazy. Yeah, it's but, pretty amazing. Yeah. But he has a lot of fun videos, and um, it's just you know, you get him at his desk in front of his wall of games. You know, that's always what you can come to expect you know i'll be talking about games where the games he picked up new new game review if there was like a nintendo directs or stuff like that happened talk about that and um it's a lot of fun he's a lot of fun and a staple for i know at least for us is to always watch every year and it's still coming up the uh christmas special which has been so many years in the making at this point where him and rob man exchange gifts and it's great mm. you know it's like it's that kind of vibe and energy that made me want to want to start doing gift exchanges on our our channel too uh, even though yeah. we can't do them in person it's it's still like the same spirit of things you know 
for sure. I, yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, it's, he's an amazing storyteller. Like he can, he's a, just really good at spinning a yarn. So like if it's talking about like a certain year in his past, if he's talking about uh, the nostalgia he has for like Dragon Quest or the Ease series, I think he's the guy that like got me into interested in Ease, which by the way, I still have yet to play an Ease game. <laughs> I own a bunch of them, but I just haven't gotten around to play one yet. But um like that's he's he's like one of those guys that just like will get you really excited and interested in something just by how he talks about it and um and yeah i mean that's that was just just great i mean i that's why i've always really liked him um the first video of his i ever saw was like i think i was looking for for like youtube videos about the distant worlds final fantasy concerts and his video was the first thing i'm up so I watched it and I was like, "This guy's great. He's talking about talking about what I love." Yeah. And I like saw some like other other videos and stuff that he does. Like, oh, he likes everything that I like. Oh, and he's I've never even heard of half these things. This is this is cool. Mm-hmm. So then and I was hooked from from there. Yeah, it's like a cozy channel to me. It's like it's easy to. Mm. It's just warm every t- especially the the yearly uh, Christmas special is always like just a treat when you see that drop in the subscriptions. That's like yeah that time of year you know you can't have that time of year without the christmas special like over a decade of uh those in a row so um yeah happy console gamer so if you're into video games you know obviously that's that's the market for it but check them Mm. out so uh i think from that i think the best angle for me to go into is is talking in terms of storytellers and video games um so the where the place i want to go with that is uh there's a youtube channel called action button and it's action button and it's run by tim rogers who was a writer for kotaku for a while uh i would say for a non-insignificant period of time Mm -hmm. uh he was a contributor for kotaku um he he left right around the same time Jason Schreier left um, to start doing his own thing. He's sort of a fledgling game developer. He's he's developed a few games um, with his studio, whose name is Action Button. But the channel Action Button is really a, a video essay series on delving into video games. But but almost like telling the story of a video game or like, like the stories and like, not just like the, the actual like narrative, but like the story of the development, the mechanics, the, all that sort of thing, almost right. through like a personal anecdotes and personal experience. Okay. You think of like, I think there's a term, I, I could be totally mistaken about this, but I think there's a term in journalism called gonzo journalism and that's the idea of where you rep- you're reporting on like current events or news, but you're using your own personal like it's very much framed as your personality, your your past, your all that's informing the news that you're that you're doing. Hmm. I I don't really know how I feel about that in terms of like in terms of like serious journalism. Not saying that games journalism isn't also serious journalism, but when it comes to video games, a Gonzo journalism fits more because video games are so much more personal in terms of our feelings towards them our nostalgia that's baked into them are the the periods of time it brings us back to when we're talking about them um and he just has the most fascinating life that's also at the same time extremely mundane and normal mm-hmm. but is but is also uniquely just extremely special and and fascinating and so tim rogers is just one of the most interesting people that i've ever seen on the internet he has a uh just a fascinating way of delving into talking about video games he only has i think like eight or nine reviews up on the channel there's the final fantasy 7 remake there's doom there's pac-man there's uh Cyberpunk 2077, Tokimeki Memorial, um, 
Boku no Natsu Yasumi. And I think that's it. There might be one that I'm forgetting. Um, but, uh, like, the Tokimeki Memorial Review is almost five hours long. The Boku no Natsu Yasumi Review is six and a half hours long. Um, oh, wow. Whereas... Compared to compared to talking about Final Fantasy VII remake is like maybe like two hours long. He also had while he worked for Kotaku, he also did a series uh, on that's called "Let's Mosey: A Slow Translation of Final Fantasy VII," in which over the course of about a year, he did like a small video series where he talked about different translation differences of Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. And it, it sort of slowly revealed throughout the course of that series that it's it's more it's it's about the game, but there's a lot more about him and, and him processing things in his own life through it. It's every video that he does is like that, and it's some of the most beautiful video making I, I, I've ever seen. It they're uh like the like the Boku no Natsu Yasumi like made me very like emotional which is something that a lot of youtube videos there, there's a couple of, there's another one at least that i'm going to talk about today that also has made me like cry basically and it's like having strong reactions like that to a youtube video i mean that just goes to show you the levels of quality yeah that some of the some of these creators have so action button it's very long form content i know not everybody's into that uh, I'm sorry. There's probably gonna. There's at least one more person that has that I would consider long form mm -hmm. content that's on my list. So that's not everybody's cup of tea, and I get that. Um, yeah. But I would say try to branch out with it. Like take it in bits. You know, maybe don't do it all at once. D Tim does a really great thing because he he breaks it up into like sections and chapters, so you can like you can take it in chunks if you want to. So, um, but. Because, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, you know, not, not everybody has six and a half hours to sit around and watch a video. Yeah. It's like, I get that, you know, but. Yeah, for a while, I was not a long form content kind of person. I was really like, I really mm -hmm. don't, especially not in that realm, but especially when it was like when I was really into watching like Let's Plays and stuff. And you'd have, mm -hmm. you know, I much prefer the channels that are like 15 minutes a piece, even if it's a ton yep. of episodes rather than the ones that are just like drop an hour and a half at a time. Like, yeah. I can't do that. And uh, I'd still probably feel the same way, but yeah, it's best to split it up. And especially the videos like that, video essay style, ones that you can mm -hmm. listen to and not give your whole attention to. Those are great. You know, you can treat them like podcasts. And especially when, if you are driving extensively too. Yeah, that's another thing you just yeah. throw on easily. So I'm always on yeah. the lookout for more uh, channels in that realm, like video essay style for sure. I love finding new ones to watch, so I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, it's it's definitely a big recommendation. Um, I mean, I think to get a taste of, of Tim in general, there are some shorter videos that I would recommend that I think are up on the Kotaku, still up on the Kotaku channel. One is like a 50-minute video of him talking about the first 15 minutes of... Or the, not the first 15, the first 30 minutes to 45 minutes of Link's Awakening. Hmm. Um, and it's like him from memory describing the entire beginning of that game, and it's it's pretty impressive for somebody who hadn't played it. He admits that he hadn't played it in like a while, but he remembers it like perfectly. And he's like, "This is like the best vertical slice of game you can remember." He has like a I don't remember the term for it. It's not like photographic memory, but it's something very similar where he like he can remember and recall stuff. Yeah. but it's like it's like he's always remembering and experiencing that stuff like constantly which sounds kind of <laughs> like a nightmare <laughs> um and then you're talking like the black but, mirror like uh being able to replay it he just replays it in his his head he no? can yeah he can kind of yeah. just do that yeah i don't know I, it just seems to me like that's that's rough yeah but but he's yeah i i, I big big recommendation to action button as well as tim rogers's other content so all right um, for sure yeah for sure i think i'll do my last mainly video game oriented one then just since we're going this trend okay and that's uh a friend of ours 
He's uh, not like uh, I'm not talking millions of subscribers uh, channel here. I uh, wanted to shout out Blinkoom. We both have, been, have talked about yeah. enjoying his videos recently. And I sent him yeah, a tweet not too long ago. I'm like, yeah, I'm really liking these videos. Like I'm, I was getting hooked on. Uh, I was going through them because I was like, man, he's he's really engaging. It's it's fascinating and great to listen to. He's got his his massive wall of games behind him. You know, it's like uh, he, it's, he just it's has like the, fun ways to the YouTube of yesteryear. For sure, it's like a more intimate, you know, talking about video games and, and personal, personalized. So he, he has a lot of really nice ways of speaking uh, about video games. Um, I just really appreciate. You can tell how passionate he is about about them, and the way he speaks about them is really engaging. And yeah, mm. for sure. Yeah, I, I just was, uh, I just watched or listened to his NES, his complete box, his newest video. It's I was in my to watch today. later. <laughs> yeah, I just listened later. to the, I just listened to it today while I was working or driving. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, he's a very soothing voice. It's very like Pete Dora vibes in terms of like the relax, relaxation. Mm hmm. Um, we, I guess neither of us probably have Pete Door, but he would. He's probably gonna. No, he'll he'll show up. Pete I'm sure. We yeah. don't recommend Pete Door. <laughs> <laughs> no, you... or nor Pete Door TCG. We don't recommend either of those, which is why I just named them. Yeah, I wasn't, um... gonna, I wasn't gonna bring him up just in case you were gonna mention him, but yeah, I was gonna say he's mm -hmm. very similar category to me as Pete Door, to where it was like, yeah, both very. I love the way they talk about games, and you can tell they're passionate about what they're talking about, and it's very compelling so this yeah i i think the thing i like yeah blink has just a very u unique perspective and I, I think i think you highlight yeah the way they talk about games is just oftentimes it's like people will use the same sort of like i don't know lingo or language but they always have a they him in particular has such a uh, way I don't know. I guess I just don't hear people talk about games in sort of the exact kind of way that he does, um, which is yeah, refreshing. So it's very authentic. Yeah. You know, it's not they're not putting on a show. Yeah. You know, it's like just giving it to you raw, and that's how I like it. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zach, that's TMI. I don't know, um, but uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I. I, and I think I think one of the things that I also appreciate is just like willing to give games a lot of games, different games, and weird and strange and unusual games the benefit of the doubt. And I, as somebody who's also a fellow Battle and Wonderworld lover, uh, I can appreciate people who are willing to give games that have a reputation, uh, you know, more of a chance. So yeah, and Blink did this uh, video a while ago, the last Nintendo Direct, where he did a tier list of every announcement in the Nintendo Direct. I thought that was fun. I was like, I almost want to steal that idea for our channel. Hmm. Uh, he's that's like, actually, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. It was fun. I like that. And he also started doing another idea I liked, which was like, I think he used the backloggery fortune cookie method to randomize a couple games that he would just talk about his experience with, basically. It's just like... Yeah, pull it up. It's like, I don't know, talk about. Let's talk about this game. And this thing is basically whether yeah. you can justify owning it or not. Like, I think that was the concept. It was like, do I have a reason to to be owning this game or not? And basically talk talk through it. But yeah, I think he only did one installment of that. I, I guess uh, mm. he probably does more of that when he's streaming. I'm, I'm unfortunately not much of a streamer guy. Like, if anything, I'll watch highlights, but I'm not. I don't really have the the time to watch streamers live most of the time yeah so i'm sure he does a lot more of that he does he does actively stream and he seems to enjoy that a lot too so that's cool yeah nice cozy vibes on that on that twitch stream as well i've tuned in every so often and it's always always a good always a good time i can imagine so. i can imagine what was he doing was there like a whole like was he doing something on backloggery or he was going through he was he was the one, one who was going through like all of his trophies and stuff too Yes, yeah. this was something that I love, um, where he was going through people's trophies list that oh, the, right. you know friends, community members, and he was sort of like judging the trophy lists and everything. It was pretty wonderful. Mm. I I really 
I really liked it a lot. Um, and I do remember so. him talking about how he enjoys, like, he'll do, like, the whole process of putting together, like, game of the year stuff at the end of the year. Mm. He'll do that on stream. So that'll be probably fun to watch as well. He's also someone who could probably have a good uh, discussion about, like, actual his thoughts on the game of the year and stuff because he's regularly playing these games. He's, like, he's cranking them out. He's getting through them. Mm. Unlike me, I've played, like, this is like one of the most packed years ever. I've p- played like three of the new games this year. It feels like <laughs> four of the new games. Yeah. But yeah. So what you got next? So I think this is my only other gaming one as well. Um, but this is a, going a little different track here. Um, this channel is called New Frame Plus. And this is a channel that's run by Dan Floyd. Um, if that name sounds familiar for some, maybe some older people, YouTube people, um, Dan was the voice of the, uh, the narrator for extra credits, which was a, uh, which was like a sort of a game sort of game tips or like game developer sort of like toolkit kind of, uh, a discussion channel they would talk about like all kinds of different various topics about the games industry okay. and have like resources and tips and things for for developers they'd have indie game recommendations so uh and i don't remember extra credits i think that was a i think that was an escapist show i don't even i don't really remember i'm trying to remember where that that was that came from or was it penny arcade i don't i don't remember i can't remember exactly where extra credits was from anyway Dan uh, is an animator. Um, he has worked in the video games industry. He has worked in. Um, he worked for the small Pixar subsidiary. I think it was the the one that made movies like the planes, the two planes movies, and then the cartoons movies. Who could forget? So he worked with. Yeah, so that was like the small branch that was made in like the late. 2000s i think so he worked for that studio if if memories if my memory is correct so he knows about like animation so his new frame plus in particular is is like a an animation analysis sort of channel so he's done things where he talks about the 12 principles of animation which is a an old disney um like an old disney thing that was made by i think uh what frank williams and ollie ollie I could be Frank and Ollie. They they were the two guys that wrote the book on basically like how to animate. Like this is how how you do it. So he, he's done videos on on the twelve principles. He's done videos analyzing specific video games animations. He's done stuff on like the whole Sonic franchise, which is a very extremely entertaining video. Hmm. Um, he did. He's currently a project to do is doing animation throughout the whole Final Fantasy series. He just finished five recently, so he's going to be moving on to six next. Um, he's done stuff on like little animation bits in Spider-Man, little animation bits in uh, like the 2018 game or like Zelda. Um, he's talked about like idle animations, Smash Brothers animations, and it's it's such an, a f- fun, interesting. It's somebody who loves it, not just you know animation like like a cell animation or CG animation, but like video game animation is also something that I really enjoy. It's not something that I I have the technical skill for, but it's something that I love and I love talking about. Hmm. Um, And I love just knowing information about it's like one of those things that I, I'm somebody who's not like in that world, but I am very passionate about animation. It's something that I love and it's something that I love talking about and knowing things about. So yeah, that, that whole channel is just like i i love that channel and i'll watch every single video he comes out with so cool um even if it's time about a game i don't know anything about so nice i mean i like i always like people who know their craft and and experts in different things even if like i have no even if i have no interest in the actual thing itself Mm -hmm. like there's freaking i think this is also on wired the youtube channel where they'll have like experts answering these questions. <laughs> they'll be like random like yeah wood cutting yep. expert answers these questions. I'm like right, I'm here for it. Okay. I-, I believe Wired has the uh has the gun expert 
uh, I, I think it's a Wired.com thing where they where they have him like judge different like video game animation like yeah. gun animations yeah, and stuff. stuff like that. And I'm just like I love this. This is awesome. Like having a having like a firearms expert like know like, yeah, knows his knows sort this. of thing about. I don't know if I'm conflating two different channels at this point, but there's also like the real life mobster analyzes like movies and and, uh. and stuff. <laughs> He's like a famous like person who was involved in in the mafia, like oh, okay. analyzing scenes from The Godfather sure. and Scarface and stuff. <laughs> so, okay, I'm here for it. All these random experts on different things. I like that. But yeah, if, yeah, I like yeah. If you're really into animation, I can imagine that's fascinating too. I feel like I would be yeah. interested in that. Yeah, okay. and and if you are into let's plays. Um, mm-hmm. Dan also has a Let's Play channel that he collabs with a few other people. There's an, I think there's another Dan or another two Dans that he how many knows that are on have? the channel. I don't know how many Dans you could have, but um, there's a Dan Jones, no relation. Um, there's uh, his wife Carrie as well um, comes on and guests every. I think they they do weekends stuff together. I think he's usually is no, I think weekends is usually guest slot. <laughs> Um, where it can sometimes be one of the other Dans, and then Carrie will sometimes be on too. Um, and uh, he did like the, the whole Kingdom Hearts, the whole Kingdom Hearts series. He did that, which was fun for me because I I've obviously played all the games. One fun little thing that he did during that playthrough was he would have like random Disney facts, things that he like kn- knows or learned about like Disney animation, either while he was working or uh, the subsidiary or um, just general knowledge about Disney animation and things like that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of new frame, uh, was that? That's called play frame is that channel. And a lot of the fun of that can sometimes be him just talking about the animation while he's playing the games as well. So nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could really use a lot of uh, more new let's play channels to get into. They used to be my whole thing. Yeah. I was like, what first got me into YouTube was watching Let's Plays, like Chugga Conroy, uh, Nintendo Caprice, oh, yeah. and these classic kinds Earth. of classic Let's Players. And I mean, I'm still subscribed to Chugga Conroy. It just it really depends. I don't. Well, actually, it doesn't really depend because even games I uh, really like, like he replayed uh, Paper Mario recently, and I was mm-hmm. never. I never got myself to watch it. I just haven't been able to get myself to watch Let's Plays like I used to, because that's. I guess it depends on the game, but it's one that I don't really usually like to listen to as like a podcast. I actually want to be able to watch. And I just don't yeah, have time that's... for those as much, especially if it's a long form series, but yeah, but I still love them. I still love mm-hmm. them. And I have these channels where I'm like, I know I would love their content. Like there's this, um, Gab Smolders who I think is married to or a girlfriend of Jack Septic guy. And she does like oh okay she yeah. does a ton of like cozy games and stuff you know but she does like hours you know I'm I'm sure she streams it too but yeah. it's like it'll be like two hours so like part one of whatever it is but she'll do games right up my alley I just never have time to actually watch them I'm like one day I'll I'll be able to watch these one day I'll get around to them but <laughs> it's tough. But uh, my my next channel I want to recommend is one I've, I've recommended multiple times in the past throughout this channel. Uh, they were always my favorite YouTube channel for some time. And that's Blind Wave. All right, Blind Wave. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've talked about this. For yeah, a for bit. years. I don't now. know if I've still I think I've still yet to really look into this <laughs> yeah. at all. I know you've been you've mentioned it to me for actual years now. I feel like now is now is a good time for me to actually look into it. And Blind Wave is one of those channels where. Um, they they do TV show reactions, they do movie reactions, they do movie reviews, podcasts, stuff like that. Um, and they do stream, but I don't really watch that that side of their channel. But uh, when I first started watching their channel, it was all about them. I wanted to watch all every video they put out, so I would specifically watch the shows that they were doing reactions to, just so I'd be able to watch their reactions afterwards after each episode. But I got to the point where they got so big and they had they were starting to do so many different series that I fall I fell way behind and have since not mm. been able to watch a lot of their content just because they're not shows I've personally watched yet. But they're always in the back in the back log for me because 
there are a lot of shows like I really do want to watch these shows, but I have to get around to the shows first before I can watch theirs. And uh, <laughs> right. but there's still a lot of series I'm very fond of. They did, I think it was because they watched The Last Airbender is what got me to watch it. Is because they were gonna react to Vikings. That's what got me to watch it. Black Sails, um, Game of Thrones. I was watching, but that was another great series of theirs. You know, they do a lot of anime. They do animated shows. They do live action shows. They do pretty much all the Marvel shows, and like they're all super into like the comic book Marvel uh, superhero side of things as well. And Star yeah. Wars, they're super into Star Wars. They'll watch every Star Wars show that comes out. Um, so, yeah, while I'm behind on a lot of their stuff, there's so much content there that, like, at least I think it's monthly at this point. Or maybe maybe it's weekly. I don't even know exactly their schedule right now. But they would do movie reviews as well. So it could be some new releases or they'll have, like, polls that they'll have people vote on what they'll watch next. And so those are always fun. You get something there that you might like there. But they're like the, the thing I always pointed to when it came to like reactions and what reaction content should be like. Because mm. if they're watching like an hour long show, you know, the video is going to be cut down uh, significantly, obviously. It's just the highlights of the reaction. And then even the the whole length of the video will be like pretty much more than double the actual length of the reaction. Cause they always have detailed discussions on everything. Um, as much as you can basically like they will be taking notes every now and then, you know, they actually really get into it and do these discussions. So, um, that's, that's what something I really appreciate about them too, but they're just a lot of fun and I've been watching them for, for years now. So Yeah. Definitely worth a, a shot if you are really, especially into movies and TV shows and that whole like nerd core type stuff, you know, Marvel, Star Wars, uh, anime, mm-hmm. things like that. So, yeah, they're great. They're great. And I, I don't have anything with me, but I've I had gotten multiple shirts that they put out in the past and stuff. So, oh, nice. I was, cool. I was a Patreon supporter for months and months, but then I was like, you know, I don't have, I haven't had time to watch the videos. So at a certain point, I had to cut it off. But, yeah. So, big <laughs> fan, big fan of Blind Wave. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my my next one, I think that can sort of tangent off that a little bit, um, just because it has. I guess we could tangent and say like movie reviews, kind of, mm-hmm. but that's only one one facet of of the channel so uh i have made reference to them for many years now um off and on Red i have letter a shirt media. that i sometimes i have a shirt that <laughs> I, I i wear on the channel and uh they are i would probably say they're easily my favorite youtube channel just across oh. the board and, and that's that's not a slight against anyone else it's just I've rewatched their videos, probably like like all of their stuff. I think the only thing that I haven't gone back and rewatched are their the half in the bag reviews. I think that's the only which is actually funnily enough the T-shirt that I have is the half in the bag shirt. Um, that's the only series that I haven't gone back and watched every single like review back forth. Um, but they have multiple shows, so. For context, if you don't know who Red Letter Media is, if you ever came across in like the early 2010s a an, a 70 minute long uh, Phantom Menace review that was done by a, a voiceless uh, praised wife murderer um, that was very mad, quote unquote, about how bad the Phantom Menace was and sort of nitpicked and sort of tore apart like all the st- stupid inconsistencies of it yeah. then subsequently did that for attack of the clones and um and uh revenge of the sith um they actually started mike as mr plinkett who's this character that they came up with when he and his friend rich evans were in high school 
they'd actually done reviews for all of the Star Trek uh, TNG movies, um, which is actually where Mike's real passion lies. He's he's a big Star Wars fan too, but he's like Star Trek is like that's more like his his bigger passion, I would say. Um, when it comes down to it, um, so that's kind of where they got their big sort of like start. I, I would say like on on YouTube, um, but they Red Letter Media as a whole started doing kind of modern movie reviews. That was what Half in the Bag was. Um, they expanded for their love of B movies and have a series called Best of the Worst, um, which is basically they pick three movies, watch all of them, and then determine which one they feel is the best of the worst. And they're always like terrible movies you've probably never heard of before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's wonderful. Uh, they're, they're just extremely entertaining uh, round tables where they discuss the stuff they show. We'll, we'll show clips of them, their reaction in the, in the, like the screening room or they'll be watching it. So they'll, they'll cut back and forth. They'll show clips of the movie as well with a lot of that. But it's just like a bunch of guys from Wisconsin just yucking it up and making each other laugh and making fun of each other. And it's just it's just a, a really great time. And then so with Best of the Worst, they have a sub-series of that called Wheel of the Worst. And that's instead of instead of watching three B movies, they also have like a, a huge collection of just like random, crazy, weird VHS tapes. So things like instructional videos or um, there is one we were uh, there's one that I because I've been making my way through Wheel of the Worst again, like the, a playlist I have of specifically those. And there was one that we were just watching the other day that they watched a video called Christmas with Dennis. And it was just this guy named Dennis who made a video of him playing uh, an organ and he's just playing his little organ. He's playing a bunch of Christmas Christmas tunes. And then in the background, there's like the, the most stereotypically like 1950s, like all the decorations are very like old. Mm -hmm. And there's a train going around the Christmas tree. And that inspired our house. We have a Lego train around our Christmas tree this year. So, oh, yeah. so, um, so I was like, so there you go. Christmas yeah. with Dennis. They watched a terrible movie called Christmas with Dennis and that inspired us. So anyway, all that, all that being said, um, it's, it's not just movie stuff. They, they, there's a bunch of content, like random stuff that they'll make. Um, just recently, they did. Uh, they sort of talked about their uh, a newer, kind of a little newer hobby of theirs of collecting movie props, so or or film or TV props. So they have um, they have one of the models of the US, USS Enterprise D that was destroyed in one of the in one of the f most famous Star Trek TNG episodes called Cause and Effect. Mm where the enterprise is caught in a time loop or it keeps blowing up and they can't, can't stop it. So they have one of the models from that was blown up from, from the show. So it was like them figuring out how they were going to display it. And it was a really great, really interesting, cool video of them talking kind of about their process about that sort of thing. And so, but it's just really refreshing because they know and understand like film. And it's nice to have like, whether they're reviewing like, terrible B movies that they have a huge passion for if they're reviewing new stuff. Um, there's always like, you can tell that they know what they're talking about, but you don't have the pretense of like film critics or what have you. Um, it, it, there's just like a realness to the, to they, to, uh, right. to how they review things. I think a lot of people might compare them to like, uh, like Jeff, was it Jeff Johns? I think he's a he's a movie Jeremy. reviewer on YouTube. Jeremy Johns. I don't, who's Jeff Johns? I don't even know. Oh, Jeff Johns is a comic comic writer. I think uh, Jeremy Johns. Um, because because Jeremy Johns usually is kind of like a keep it real sort of guy. Like he's very very brief and yeah. But they're not really brief. Um, <laughs> I would say a lot of the time. I mean, they can have reviews earlier on. They were a lot briefer. Now they can sometimes have reviews that go on for. For quite a while. How uh, how long? Um, 
Um, well, let's see. Uh, they had a, a series of catch-up videos that they did where they just talk. They have like short reviews of movies, and there was that was in two parts, and it was like forty-five minutes long for each part. And they probably discussed like a dozen movies. No, I think more like fifteen movies or something in that period of time. So that's like, but that's an oddity. Whereas, oh, there's another series they have called Review, where that's not modern movies. That's like movies from the past that they want to specifically highlight and, and talk about. So they just did uh, Macaulay Culkin, famous celebrity Macaulay Culkin, oh. is a friend of theirs. Um, and he came on with Rich Evans to talk about Raising Arizona recently. And I think that was about like half an hour, 35 minutes, maybe, mm-hmm. a review of Raising Arizona. Um they can sometimes talk about some things for an hour, but usually it doesn't go too much. I would say it usually is under an hour when they're talking about like a specific movie. So it's usually under an hour. Just like us. Just like us. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Get on pretty yeah I would say they, they know a lot more about movies than, than I do, but because yeah. they've made them terrible, terrible movies, they've made them. Uh-huh. So <laughs> so they know. Fair enough. Mm. Fair enough. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, they're great. Um, huge recommendation. I mean, they're just, if nothing else, um, one of the one of my favorite comments that I read is like, oh, cool, I'm going to sit here and watch uh, Mike and Rich talk about Star Trek. I have no interest in Star Trek. I just like hearing you guys talk about them. Like, that to me is like the testament for how entertaining they are. I'll watch them review movies that I just do not care about at all, but I like hearing them talk about it. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the goal. That's how you know you mm. you're doing something right, right there. All right, now, next up is a channel I know you uh, discovered recently, actually, and I had no idea mm. that it's very random to hear that, but it's Cody Co. All right. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cody Co. Very different direction here, but he's, yeah, he's pretty much um, reaction type content for the most part, like. Um, He's definitely known for watching The Button, which is a little internet mm-hmm. dating show. And he's does also done a lot of, you know, these other weird, cheesy dating shows um, throughout the past. Like, think old, like, MTV-style shows, things like that. And he just has great reactions to them. And I know you were watching, and I was addicted. I was immediately hooked and went and watched all the, the couples, one that he did with his... His girlfriend at the time, now wife. So mm. that's a fun series too. The, the, those two reacting together is such a fun dynamic. It was just a lot they, of fun. They are, they're such a great couple, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, they're just very extremely, their chemistry is just like through the roof, but it's like, it's not in a way that's like off putting. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like a really wholesome couple. They both, so. And they both feed off of each other really well with it. And mm. he's his hum- his sense of humor is just very funny to me, and then it's also helped with a lot of his uh, videos. The editing is the the whoever does the editing does a really fun job too. With like dramatic like <laughs> great edits in there that uh, really yeah. add to it as well. But he's just a lot of fun. Like if I ever want a video to like to cheer me up, kind of thing, you know, not have to like be super like depressed watching it like that's the one i go to you know it's gonna be fun he does a lot of jubilee videos those kinds of youtube videos as well he'll be watching those Mm. but yeah that's the kind of reaction content i like as well because they it's like he's clearly adding a lot to him and yeah he introduced me to the button which is, is a funny little uh dating show as well that show is so bizarre <laughs> yeah. to me. There's everything about it. I was introduced to the button through uh, through Moist Critical, Charlie. Mm-hmm. But um, but I think it's funny because like people are like, up, oh, up. Oh, Charlie's been watching Cody Co again. And people yeah. will say that, say that they think he he might watch he might watch Cody. So <laughs> it feels like because he did. I forget what video was recently. It was like right after. The day after, but I mean, certain things go in, in similar circles. Anyway, was it the was it the donut daddy? Yeah, donut daddy for sure. They, they paved <laughs> that, the way for that. Yeah, one. That whole world is 
horrifying. That whole <laughs> about that scared me. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I mean, he's got fun reaction to the TikToks yeah. and stuff too. You know. Yeah. Well, that's a more mainstream type of content that I think more people can enjoy. Mm. You know, it's not like some of yeah. the early ones we recommend. Like, you got to be into video games or movies to really enjoy them. Yeah. This one's like, if you yeah. want have a good time, have a good sense of humor, then definitely fun. Yeah. And he's one that I'll try to watch pretty much every upload he puts out. And you're not going to usually be super invested in a long video here. I know he does podcasts and stuff. I don't really watch that, but. Yeah, uh, usually they're pretty quick, like 15, 20 minute videos at the most. So, mm. yeah, Cody Co. And there's you got another channel called Cody yeah. and Co., which is just like more of the same kind of content, pretty much. Yeah, I have different different avenue streams, you know. Mm-hmm. You, gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta pull pull it off. Um, I think it, yeah, where I, I I think where I'll go after that is yeah yeah I think. It's still specific, but I think there's there's a lot. It is a general interest, I think, um, still. So one of the channels that I was introduced to through... I'm not going to say the channel because the specific that I was introduced to them from because I want to highlight them on another <laughs> okay. um, on a, a future episode. So not I have just know that I just know that I have talked about them before and I also own shirts of their of theirs. Uh, and and clothing of theirs. So, um, I, but I was introduced to this particular one that I want to highlight today through them, and he's somebody that since discovering I've, I want to go back and watch all of his old videos. I haven't done that yet, but, and I'm also a little behind. I'm not like super up to date currently, um, but I'm gonna probably binge here over the course of the next few days just because I'm really interested. Um, and that channel is abroad in Japan, and I've actually talked about that on uh, on this channel before as well. I've talked about him before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Broad is a Japan vlogger. He is a uh, uh, British immigrant, I guess you could say. He worked. Uh, he started living in Japan through the uh, was it the J- JAF JAS something Japan. Uh, what's it called? J- J- Jet. <laughs> wow, I don't remember. Uh, it's basically the teaching program, or, or what have you. It's like, it's like a, um, it's a program where you, you, you know, p- teaching English in Japan. Basically, I think it's Jet, J T, Japan, something teaching. I don't know. I could be, I could be forgetting. That. I haven't. I actually haven't heard that word in a while, so I, I don't remember. But in, in other words, anyway. He started living in Japan like over 10 years ago now um, and has just made blog content since then. Um, but it's 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 beyond just like, oh, a little like simple vlogs. It's like he's you can tell he's really passionate about making films and making um, high quality um, showcases of the different areas in, in Japan. And he'll, um, you know, he'll. He's made like some mini documentaries. He did one on the on Fukushima. Um, he has a series called uh, Journey Across Japan. He's had I think five or six of them now. He's actually doing one right now. Is there's daily video uploads uh, that are happening right now from one that I think he's either finishing up or currently or probably may have already finished up the trip that he was doing, um, which was like a it was a huge huge endeavor that he's currently in the, in the process of doing as we're recording this. So just, which is pretty, pretty great. Um, but, um, yeah, it's just like a lot of stuff about Japan. Um, like he addresses things like common misconceptions and, um, he'll talk about like, he, he did a video talking about like those obnoxious people that have been like coming to Japan and like committing crimes and, and stuff. Right. So he's made videos about them. Um, uh, he has. I don't know if it's only hosted. I feel like I feel like they go back and forth, and I don't. I could be getting this wrong completely, but he and a particularly po- popular Twitch streamer known as uh, Sea Dog VA mm-hmm. um, have a series that they do together called uh, Chris and Connor's Wacky Weekend, um, where they uh, basically they 
get together. They go stay at particular hotels. Uh, sometimes it's like they, they're trying to explore like weird or unusual love hotels. Um, Absolutely. But they also are like looking for specific things to do in um, in or around different areas of Japan. Um, so it's just it's just such a such a great channel. I mean, it, to me, it's like really highlighting and showcasing the beauty of the country and like it more than i would say more than pretty much anything it's like really been influential in being me like man i like this is something i need to do in my 30s i need to go to japan in my 30s for sure um yeah. so that's that's definitely like a goal for me so yeah, yeah i mean it's great content i mean if you just like hearing about japan or or seeing people talk about japan and and exploring the culture and it's just such a cool wonderful channel so abroad in japan big big thumbs up i have haven't caught up but i still i will catch up i don't miss videos for them very mm -hmm. frequently so yeah yeah that's awesome that's awesome yeah. i do want to check that out for sure i've been meaning to because Jap japan and japanese culture in general always fascinates me and it's definitely my my destination i want to I want to check off as well as soon as possible. So, mm. I'm sure. All right, the last channel I'm going to recommend is I'm going to get in my true crime bag. All right. Ooh, <laughs> okay. It's a channel called Rotten Mango. <laughs> all right. You might know this. Uh, I, feel like I've heard, I feel like I've heard the name. I don't yeah. know if I know anything about this channel, though. You might know this YouTuber who also has a separate channel. Her name is Stephanie. Stephanie Sue S O O, so okay. She has uh, Steph her, just her name as one channel, where she does whatever stuff, and then she has another channel. I like I think it was called Mango Butt or something. <laughs> so she has a few <laughs> different channels, but Rotten Mango is the one where it's entirely fo focused on true crime, like new cases, sometimes older cases. But uh, it's very well done. It's like if you're into true crime at all, this is going to be right up your alley. It's it's exactly what you want. It gives you the, the case like in the most detail possible. So if you're looking for like just headline basic information, that's not really the place to go. It's like a deep dive. We're talking like usually 40 minutes to an hour plus uh, deep dives onto the story. But she'll she's like really good at telling a story. And just makes it very compelling throughout. Like, gives you all the backstory leading up to it. She even got me with some, like, she throws you for a loop with some twists halfway through sometimes. Like, you don't know what's going to happen exactly in the story. She tries to, like, authentically tell the story from, from beginning to end. And, yeah, so if you're into that at all, I would definitely recommend her. She, I know she has, like, an extensive, like, team of researchers and different based in different countries and stuff that like, cause she'll do uh, a lot of stories that I haven't been able to find uh, covered in like American media and stuff. Like it'll be like a, mm. a story from China or South Korea. And then I'll like Google it. Oh, wanna, let me see some more details on this. And it's just nowhere to be found. It'll like, and you go on, onto her like notes of the stuff she has like, uh, the website where she'll have all her like sources and it's usually like Asian websites and stuff. So like they had to translate yep. them with their own team. Yeah. I was going to say it sounded to me like it was probably something where it's like only local news to them and it's not something that like gets out super, super well. So, so yeah, they have a different, she's always talking about, we have this team member who, who speaks this language or reached out to this family member or whatever for us and uh, i mean she does co cover some uh of like american cases for sure as well and uh, other um ones that you might know about that are more mainstream but there's a lot of stories i had no idea about some crazy uh stories and it can be very you know it can be very depressing if you watch too many like back to back <laughs> like she tries, tries her best to keep it light at times but she takes everything very seriously and it's like I think it's her husband who's off camera that she'll she'll be telling the story. He's basically like 
hearing it for the first time and he'll give like reactions to things like definitely chime in where a lot of like the audience is thinking like oh well, what how'd this happen like oh no way mm. and he just it actually adds a fun <laughs> dynamic to it um so it's not like she's just talking at you the whole time you at least have someone else there she's bouncing off of a little bit mm. but it's just really engaging and yeah like i said especially when i'm like i'm late at night I'm late at night, like, driving, doing deliveries and stuff. I'm like, she, like, if I'm listening to certain podcasts of hers recently, I'm like, it puts me on edge. I'm like, I'm like uh, on high alert after listening to these, like, horror stories of, like. Jeez, oh, yeah. I'm like, I so I'm like okay, maybe you need to lay off the rotten mango for a little bit. I'll watch some, some, <laughs> some Cody Co, you know. But. Yeah, I would definitely recommend her. Like, just give it a try. I mean, you'll know after watching one or two if mm. that's your your vibe or not. Yeah, uh, true crime is one of those things that I I've always been. I I will listen to certain like YouTube videos of where people talk about them, um, where people go into like true crime sort of details. But it's one of those things that I'm more like on the like kind of adjacent to. Or it's like I I like hearing about people talk about it, but I'm not like I'm not like crazy about it but i remember there was one that i just got super into super fascinated by uh a case where it was like um i think it was the one where the guy i don't remember i can't ever remember names about things but it was one where like the guy killed his wife and his two kids and you're talking about chris um, watts chris watts yep (laughs) yep (laughs) chris watts is such a fascinating case what is it was terrifying because he like he's the one that like yeah, it was, oh, it was, yeah, it was awful. But it was kind of wild because it's like you could kind of... It was great because it was like breaking down like how... Uh, some of the stuff I watched was like basically breaking down how like law enforcement sort of like picked up on all the weird cues that he was giving and like kind of figured it out just yeah. from... Just from body simple cam- like camera, like body language and cameras. And I was like, that's awesome. Like good for them for figuring that out because that's just totally... Yeah, that whole that whole thing, but yeah, anyway, I mean, it's, it's a whole rabbit hole you get down. Like, and I still have a yeah. quite a backlog of her videos to go through. I'm just kind of going through. That's another like mm. clear podcast format that I can listen to while I'm driving. But um, yeah, it's crazy stuff from like child serial killers to uh, invasions and like torturing and like that whole um. There was a whole thing with a bunch of K-pop idols being involved in this huge like scheme. There was like there was a bar that a lot of them were involved in that was like okay, I think I remember yeah, hearing some thing. like speaking as of this. Yeah. But basically women were like actively being sexually assaulted and all this horrible stuff mm. and for years and years and they would it was just like a known thing. But until it was exposed years later from one guy and there's just so many crazy stories that mm. it's like I feel like it's it's important to know just how like bad people can be, you know, to appreciate the good in the world. Yeah. At the same time. It's very it's a very difficult thing to think about, like what are you actually getting out of these stories? Uh but Right. I have to believe there's some value in it, you know, not just entertainment. To to me, it's almost like you you could almost see it as a, it's, it's interesting because it's like a, on the one hand, you, you have a a grim fascination, like a lot of people have like a lot of, like a grim fascination with like stuff like that. But I think some of it is also like partially a count your blessings kind of thing. Cause it's like, you've had XXX and all this other stuff go right in your life so that you aren't down the 15,000 different decisions that had to be made before you get to that point. Right. Or the 15, and maybe even not even decisions, but like the 15,000 things in your life that have, whether it's outside forces or your own messed up psyche or what have you that get you into a place where this is happening. So it's like, to me, I, that's, that's where I've always sort of like, I can understand why people think that way. Cause it's like, or, or have a fascination with that. Cause it's like, Thank 
thank God I'm not in that spot. You know, I'm not, I'm not in a place like that, you know? Yeah. It's like so. fascinating to see the development of someone like how they can, yeah. how it can go so wrong. But also at the same time, mm-hmm. there's like a huge like empathy to it all. to where like, you're feeling, mm-hmm. you should be feeling things from hearing these, like, and we should be yeah. very clearly denouncing things as like horrible, heinous acts it's, and it's yeah. just crazy to hear stories of like, wow, this stuff is still happening in 2023. Like, mm. it's crazy how, and, and it, sh- it sheds a light on how it's unsafe certain things are and how you can approach different things better. Um, but just some people, obviously, it's just horrible that the things they have to endure for no good reason. Mm. And just, it's horrible. I mean, I I had like my my friend at one point was like don't you, do you think don't you think being a woman's easier <laughs> and like do you think it would be easier if easier you're a woman than than easier to be a man? in what way he said because you could just no. be, you could just be pretty and get whatever you want you know like that that was his logic <laughs> I'm like it's come uh, on uh, me- you watch these crimes <laughs> watching this true crime like more than anything I'm like. Jesus Christ, like women are so vulnerable and in, in, in so many yeah. more ways than, than men are. Like there's obviously a lot of cases of men being victims, but like it's like yeah. so heavily against women's favor. Like just to be walking in the wrong place at the wrong time, this this person gets abducted and all this and like people are victim become victims because they like turn someone down and things like that. It's like it's yeah. It's very uncomfortable. No, yeah, I, I think that like, yeah, when you you have to always take people's perspective like that. It's like, look, okay, yes, they have certain things easier, but like, it, it because but like, I mean, you gotta you gotta think about it a certain way because it's like, yeah, there's things that are really that are a lot more difficult for guys to have to handle and deal with that women don't have to. But like, there's so many things that we don't ever have to worry about. They do. Like and that's that's where you gotta you gotta have some empathy, man. Like the you nature, gotta have the nature of being a woman is just like there's so many situations yeah. just walking alone in certain neighborhoods. Right. You just have to constantly be on edge. And it's like, okay, even if I'm super yeah, alert, like... can I even defend myself against this person? Like you need to have something with you to defend yourself. You're literally biologically at a disadvantage constantly. And like right. women are just used to like having being exposed to horrible men all the time. Like you have to just navigate that. That's yeah. Just, it's horrible. Yeah. It's just like, just like have it. Like when I was dating my, my ex, it was a thing where it was like, that was something that growing up in a household with parents who grew up in the fifties and sixties and didn't have to worry about certain things that we do in since the eighties, we've had to worry about basically. And, or, or uh, certainly a lot more. And, um, so I, you know, household with two guys, two boys, in a very rural part of the world, um, and you know, dating somebody that lived in a in a certainly more a, a larger population base. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about like, oh yeah, having like having like pepper spray or even having a concealed. She was at one point was like getting her like working towards getting like a concealed carry license, um, and it's like all the power to her she has every right to to want to defend to defend herself yeah she wasn't like by she wasn't like a teeny tiny little little girl like she was just she was fairly tall she was like a little under my height but it was still like people are like men are are crazy and and Mm -hmm. weird and and do a lot of horrible things so it's like hey i get it you know i opened my eyes to a lot of stuff when i realized that and i was like Man, it's like boy, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. Sure. It's hard hearing like some of these stories where the most horrible things happen, and then the outcome is like, yeah, these men had like five years in prison, and now they're out. You know, <laughs> doing their thing. It's like yeah. so often, yeah. um, especially in other countries yeah. too. Like it's so much harder to get justice in certain areas for that mm. kind of thing. Yeah. And so. Yeah, so it can be definitely 
you know, you have to balance it out. You can't just consume all that content yeah. only. It's like it can really weigh on you if you're like right. an empathetic human being, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just all right. That's uh, that's it. But that was like the first one I thought of that kind of made made me want to do this video. It was mm-hmm. like really captivating storyteller, Rotten Mango. Cool. So well, my one. I want to highlight is my last one. I want to highlight uh, <clears throat> a great channel. Like all of these have been great. Don't get me wrong; sure. they're all great. But this is one that's uh, I would say like does longish form documentaries uh, and explorations, and um, he has a variety of different series as well. Um, and that is Defunct Land. Um, is one of my personal favorites. Um, most recently, I, I would say is probably ha- had a history of doing fairly well-known um, sort of documentaries on. So named Defunct Land because he covers rides or and, like theme park attractions and rides that no longer exist. Um, but it's beyond that. He also has a sub-series called Defunct TV where he talks about, like, old media, um, TV shows that are maybe more unusual or harder to find or, um, you know, maybe never get released on VHS or any other streaming services or, or, or maybe not necessarily lost media, but are, like, harder to come by. So mm-hmm. um, he did an episode on, like, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, which I've watched quite a few times because I, I grew up watching reruns of that. Um, where is it called? Where I... in the world is where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be that would be kind of fun though. Yeah. Uh, if uh, if he did that, um, he did an episode. Defunct TV did a whole episode on all of Jim Henson's career. So he's talked about like the Muppets. He talked about uh, Fraggle Rock. He went into like all the whole like a whole history of, of Jim Henson. Um, but he's done stuff on like various Disney rides, various. Um, one of my favorite early documentaries that he did was on Action Park, um, which was something that I had never heard of before, and uh, is uh, wow, that place sounded really dangerous. The New Jersey one. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Um, and that's New Jersey. Uh, baby. The Nickelodeon Hotel. The Nickelodeon Hotel. He did an episode okay. on that, which I really liked. Wow. Um, I knew that was a thing. But I would say he recently he's most uh, it was always on ads on like in the early 2000s I would say it was very very heavily advertised the Nickelodeon Hotel in in Orlando Florida. Hmm. Um, but like yeah theme park rides as well he's uh, done stuff on um, various forms of Space Mountain. Um, there was like a French version that was really interesting um, that was like very like Jules Verne inspired. He talked about that. Um, the history of uh, Disney parks. He's gone into like a lot of different angles and histories on that that sort of stuff. Just I I love Disney is obviously a very big focus. I would say because theme park. When we think of theme parks, you think Disney. Yeah, is a pretty big, uh, pretty big notable thing. So um, one of the biggest videos that just came out in the last two years that he did. It has like I think over 10 million views now, or at least it's close to that. It was uh, was an exploration of the Fast Pass at Disney parks, but it was also a documentary on like lines and like oh, the, the, the whole like, like queuing. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's fantastic, and I like I've watched five times, and I I just love this documentary. Wonderful. Um, he did an episode on. Who wrote the Disney Channel theme, which is the video that's made me cry multiple times because I've watched it multiple times and it's just a that sounds ridiculous, but when you watch it, you would understand why. Okay. Um, it's it's great. He did a recent video that I I have downloaded so I could listen to, but I'm like, this is one. He's one of those guys that like I can if I've seen it once, I can listen to it, and right. even even some ones maybe I haven't. Even some ones I haven't necessarily watched, I can kind of listen to. But like, the most recent one is about like, uh, the, it's like a symphonic Epcot show or something like that. So it's like it's like music, and it's like 
that's one that I want to sit down and watch, and I just haven't found time to, to do that yet. So yeah. I, I haven't watched that quite yet. Um, but I mean, he's just he's just great. I, I I've every video he's just very entertaining style, a really good editing style, um, and uh, someone that I've shown I've shown the videos to my my parents. I watched a lot of his stuff with them. They really find him very entertaining. Um, so I, I, Defunct Land is just, a, it's a great, great channel. Um, I think because, because he talks about like things that like a lot of people know about or love or have passion for. So Disney is like a huge, like I said, it's a huge thing. Um, I, we've obviously loved Disney on this channel. So he talks about that. I, I would say a, a lot because it's adjacent to a lot of the stuff that he grew up enjoying. So. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean definitely oh, cool. definitely a big recommendation yeah uh, yeah that sounds great to me oh it sounds right up my alley yeah there's so much youtube so uh we don't blame you if you can't make time for all of these YouTube. channels <laughs> don't blame you but uh, check out any that sound interesting to you by all means uh i'm sure we'll be able to come back in the future one day with with 10 more I mean, YouTube is just, YouTube, you can get lost in a lot of, like, the very performative, like, hit the like button, subscribe, you know, that kind of YouTube, but when you peel back mm. the, that top layer, there's so much, there's so much depth to it, there's so much you can enjoy, and that's why it's it gets yeah. overwhelming at times, I have so many subscriptions that I'm like, I haven't watched this channel in so long, I should probably just unsubscribe, but I but one day I want to, I don't want to stop watching, you know, I still want to watch them at some point. It's just a lot. That's why I'm constantly like just yeah. trying going through, like add to watch later if I'm actually interested in those ones or not. But, mm. um, yeah. So let us know any recommendations you have for YouTube channels. One more YouTube channel I'd recommend is called Tark Ron. Oh baby, Check here you go. Out. We should have started off with that with that joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number one, Charcron. That's right. Number two, you gotta check it Charcron. out. You gotta check it out. Over five hundred videos in our catalog. You gotta give it yeah, up at some baby. point. We put out a lot of content. Doesn't mean it's good. We have over years. It's yeah. I, I. It's something I stand behind. I'm. I'm proud and enjoy a lot of the content we put out. So. If yeah. You, if you like movie stuff. reviews, TV reviews. Video game reviews, podcasts, discussions, games, shenanigans. We talk about what we're passionate about. Yeah. Shenanigans. I think I think the passion shines through on the screen, doesn't it? I hope so. You can't. I hope so. But uh, yeah, I mean, we appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel. You know, we're a microscopic speck on the grand scheme of YouTube, but. We hope you've enjoyed, uh, like, just I've enjoyed making videos myself, you know. Mm -hmm. Even if only 10 people saw it, I enjoyed it, so it's worth something. I still had fun making it. Yeah. I still had fun making it, and that's that's the that's the point. That's the joy. We're just going to keep making stuff we enjoy, and we're coming up on a new year soon, and uh, I think we're going to have a lot yeah. of great stuff on the way for that year for sure. Uh, what video? Year five. What video would you recommend our viewers watch from our channel? Uh, go check out our uh, go check out our top ten television shows that define us. Ten TV shows. Is it live action or animated shows? Let's go live action. Let's go live ten action. Live action TV shows that define us. I don't even remember all that I picked for that. I yeah. don't even either. I don't either. <laughs> I probably change one of mine to Breaking Bad now. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, whatever one of one, one of the ones I had, I'd probably pick Breaking Bad now. I don't uh, know if I had Breaking Bad on mine. Hmm, that's interesting. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Right. Well, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment. And if you do, we'll be sure to read it in the next episode of the Talk Around Podcast. All right. Hit the notification that's bell true. to get true. notified when we upload a video. And click the link in the description for our social media. All right. Until then, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.